Hi everyone, welcome back to episode two of the Cybervice podcast. In today's video, we are gonna go through all of the recent topics that have come up in the past week. Plus we're gonna talk about some topics that have appeared in the news regarding GTA 6. So I am joined by Project Vice. Hello guys, it's glad to be back for episode two. I didn't think we were gonna get to episode two. I wasn't sure how people would respond, but apparently people loved it. I was really worried that like, we'd be ousted or compared to other podcasts talking about <laughs> GTA 6. But overall, <laughs> overall people have received it well yeah fantastic it's great to hear so can't wait to get into uh, the second episode but before we kick off today's episode we now have cybervice merch yep we've listened to you a lot of people have requested the merch so it's now available at the link down below or of course click on the banner on the top right hand side of the screen let's get back to it i think for this one we'll kick it off slightly differently um do you want to do you want to start off topic number one sure so the first topic that we're kicking off with today is gta 6 uh on the ps5 pro uh 60 frames per second versus 30 frames per second now a lot of people People have um, debated whether it is going to be 60 FPS or 30 FPS. Um, based off what we heard from Digital Foundry and more specifically their technical, or sorry, their founder Rich Leadbetter, um, he said that um, not going to be expecting that GTA 6 is going to be hitting 60 fps and that it's more likely going to be hitting potentially maybe 30 or so uh, reason being is because it seems that it's only going to be about 10 percent faster in terms of the cpu uh, processing power uh, on the pro versus the base ps5 so in in terms of if it is going to get to that point it's hard to necessarily say if it is but based off the information from digital foundry it seems like it may either hit 30 to 40 but it's hard to sort of say if it is uh, what, what's your thoughts on it yeah I, I, to be honest i have the same sort of stance i've um this is something that we obviously we spoke about a bit before and i think that they're always going to aim for fidelity over frame rates and mm, of course mm. i know that you'd prefer a higher frame rate um <laughs> <laughs> but for me personally i would rather like a more visually pleasing game rather than like a better performing game now that being said if we're talking about the ps5 pro and we're talking about potentially like 30 40 frames per second with like a better fidelity higher quality visuals it does make you think is the ps5 the standard ps5 and the standard series s and x xboxes are they going to struggle with the game like it begs the question oh for sure it does like if you think about from you know in regards to the base ps5 to the the pro version like there's a lot of things that we need to take into account like if if, if from what we are hearing from digital foundry that it's only going to be 10 percent difference in terms of the cpu power um then that's not necessarily too much but you know this is rocks at the end of the day they are always pushing the limits of the consoles and i don't see why they can't maybe try and figure out a way that they can sort of get it to whether if it's not 60 frames per second maybe it's sort of improving the the variable refresh rate to maybe touch it up and to enhance the overall experience um so it's hard to necessarily say with rockstar like you know they could do some crazy thing where they could try and make it work to some degree um so it's yeah i think mm. i think another thing to probably like think about is yeah we we can see that we're going to get like a 10 percent improvement in hardware but there's also the chance that the software improvements and the optimization of the console could handle gta 6 even better for example obviously this isn't something that neither me nor you are massively clued up on in terms of how they optimize consoles but hardware is only 50 percent of it how sony make the ps5 pro handle certain background tasks and stuff like that could further improve the console so yes the hardware is 10 percent better but the software performance could give them another 10 20 percent of improvements yeah that's right and and the thing is as well like these are just the specs that have come out now we don't know any more any further information as well it's not necessarily official information from sony so um of course we have to wait from sony and playstation to give us those official details and official specs so yeah we just have to we just have to wait and see do you want to touch on the the next part of this particular part in terms of the rockstar employee saying that they're confident obviously we, we, we've debated this next point and basically there's a rockstar employee that are supposedly we're not sure how authentic the conversation is we're still trying to figure out the details on this and it's on screen right now if you guys would like to see it so someone asked the rockstar employee can the ps5 frame rate mode be stable at 60 and the reply from supposed rockstar employee was i don't know but we are confident now that is a big juxtaposition there that we aren't sure and the thing is as well it, we don't even know if this rockstar employee like is he verifiable is it is it is this is he even is this information even coming from rockstar employee i don't necessarily know i know that some people shared his linkedin page to say that he is a rockstar employee but um the fact that he's saying we don't know but we are confident like i don't even know if you can even really say that if you're under nda like i'm not sure no nah, not knowing but being confident is like saying this this, this coffee tastes bad good <laughs> like... yeah, yeah I, I know i know what you're saying yeah i know what you're saying it just it just doesn't really necessarily make 
too much sense in what he's saying. So yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a weird one if it is if it is true. But yeah, we don't like I said we don't we don't know if it's if it's legit. So that's what I'm that's where I'm gonna leave leave it at for me anyways. Yeah, of course. And I think the the only last thing I'd say is as well is like frame rates are only important in certain segments. For example, cutscenes being at 24 frames per second is fine because you know it's cinematic. That's how most yeah. movies are shot. Yeah, yeah, that's um, right. But then playability stuff like shooting mechanics. Maybe when you've got maybe when you're aiming down your sights, the frame rates are are improved to 60 frames per second um you know there's so many different ways that variable frame rates can be introduced that it all comes down to hardware software optimization and this is going to be one of the things that we're not going to be able to figure out unless we get a massive leak from rockstar or sony come out and say that we are proud to announce 60 frame per second for this game which i don't see very likely but it's a waiting game isn't it yeah that's the thing is every everything is literally a waiting game it's frustrating because all we do is wait because rockstar is so silent in any of the information that they do come out with in terms of their official communication like it's always just like trailer one and then wait a few months and then next for and then wait for trailer two it's just yeah it's uh it can be frustrating but yeah we just have to wait from official word from rockstar really it's all great that we got this this these leaks and this these news and that um yeah we just have to wait and see i guess yeah of course 100 percent. and this kind of brings us on to uh, the next point which does kind of link back into you know console optimization and and how things will be developed performance wise will every single interior be enterable mm um now this is an interesting one um i i actually went over this in my video the other day on my channel that uh it potentially could be the case that every interior may be enterable um now i don't know if you guys are aware if any of you guys didn't keep up with the leaks from last year in early december before the trailer launched that a day prior that one of rockstar's north uh well, one of their art directors at rockstar north aaron garbert apparently his son's friend somehow uh, recorded a uh, gameplay of gta 6 on his personal computer and it was actually a playable build of GTA 6, obviously within the developmental stages, but it was only a 15 second clip showing Vice City and the, and the skyline. Um, but apparently he was replying to someone on like his, because it leaked on TikTok, I think, from what I can understand. Yeah, it's some, and, someone messaged him on his yeah. TikTok account and he replied back, yeah. Yeah, and apparently he's, he was saying to someone that Rockstar planning to, to ensure that 70% of the buildings are enterable. Um, now, that is a pretty big statement. Obviously, you know, he's just leaking this information, whether it's verifiable, where, whether what he's saying is true or not. He, he did take a photo with Aaron Garbutt, so he did have some physical contact with him. Whether he has insider info or not, and whether whether Aaron Garbutt said it to him or not, we don't know, obviously. We have to, of course, take it with a massive pinch of salt, but it is pretty interesting to see if that does end up being the case. That is absolutely insane. What's your thoughts on it? Yeah, uh, exactly what you've just said. I think that I want to believe it. I want to think 70% of the interiors because obviously that's just, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Like there is, there is no way, there's not even a way to physically comprehend that and to imagine that being a reality for the game. So I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to believe it because I don't want to set expectations that are unrealistic, but at the same time, time we know that for example with procedural generation creating interiors set from like a, an ai system a set list of models and stuff that interiors can be altered and varied um these are systems that games developers use where they can literally create create four walls and you know create an interior for it by clicking a few buttons because the technology is there to create varied interiors through procedural generation for interiors but um i think it all comes down to if the consoles can handle that now of course obviously not everything's rendered in everything's localized rendering so as mm, you get closer mm, to objects mm. more things render in yeah um but you know let's just go off like an example that there could be across the whole map potentially i don't know 30 to 60 thousand establishments across the whole map Dude, that's um, wild that's wild yeah and i mean obviously that that's not just buildings that's 30 to 60 thousand rooms mm, like individual geez. rooms and buildings <laughs> yeah i mean when you start throwing numbers like that at it my brain goes back to reality and goes ah that's not very likely but at the same time it's like well hang on if it is 70 percent of that if it's 20 percent of that that's insane basically i don't know but like mm. either even 10 percent of the buildings being enterable is still an obscenely large amount of numbers yeah i was just gonna say like um rockstar rockstar wizards man they like like we, we you know we we're talking about earlier with the frame rate and then pushing the the power of the consoles 
day. I can definitely see it happening, but yeah, man, it, it will be insane if that ends up coming to fruition. Um, there was also Jason Schreier's article that came out in July of 2022. Now, I've, I've gone over this article numerous of times, as, as you have as well, um, yeah. that there will be way more interiors than any other previous GTA. Now, he's obviously very reputable, so that's adding yeah. to the validity of what this leaker has come out with. And also, as well, in addition to this, we did see, you know, officially from Rockstar within Trailer 1 that those buildings within Vice City and even on Ocean Drive, like through those windows, there, you know, the, the, the ceiling light um, were visible. There was plants, there was TVs, lamps and paintings. So seeing that like take to also as well follow the pattern of like um, artificial inter intelligence, sorry, to um, uniquely, uh, how, how would I say, um, in terms of like making sure that it's it's uniquely randomized um, throughout each interior. So maybe we could see, we could be seeing, you know, different types of unique interiors all the way throughout. That could be something that could be really, really interesting. Yeah, definitely. I think as well, like a lot of people have asked me as well about like Spider-Man 2, where they mm. created like the parallax effect for yes, interiors. Yes, yes, yes. Now, whilst that is possible that Rockstar would use like a similar technology, I feel like Rockstar would rather just have a closed door that you can't enter rather than falsify an interior. When talking about GTA 5, that was a console that was made for the PS3. And to see how far they could push that game on the PlayStation 3, to see what they could do i mean red dead uh, red dead 2 was made for ps4 they haven't they haven't made a game for ps5 yet um so seeing how they could stretch the capabilities of the size of buildings rooms interior generation for the ps5 and the ps5 pro and maybe in the future the next gen of xbox i don't think it's a massive stretch to assume that rockstar has a way to work around this and make interiors work on a large scale and, and to your point as well with um them just like for example like you know when you, you walk into a room within uh, walk into a door within uh sorry when you're trying to attempting to open sorry a door within red dead redemption 2 that, that sometimes the doors are just locked so that could be a way that they could try and um they could they, they can manage yeah. the output of the console yeah yeah that's what i'm trying to say yeah um do you have any more thoughts on this point uh, i don't think so like yeah everything we know officially from Rockstar within Trailer 1 and obviously unofficially as well. Um, it's shaping up to be pretty awesome but uh, we just have to you know, we just have to wait and see yeah 100% and then this brings on to the next point I'll let you introduce the next point mm. so the next one that we're going over is NPC behavior how will we what will we see and how will it be incorporated within GTA 6 um, now we know that based off what Take 2 has filed within their patterns that it seems that NPC behavior is going to be way more realistic and so much more um, that the behavioral interactions are going to be much more expanded upon in comparison to Red Dead Redemption 2. Like building upon those systems, it seems that they're going to be much more self-aware. There's going to be predetermined routes where real world events may impact their decision and therefore their thought process as well. So this seems really, really cool. And I'm actually I'm actually so excited for this because this is going to add to and add another layer on top of what they've done within RDR2 and with the power of the new consoles like this can be absolutely insane to how far they can go with this yeah no 100% I think something else as well which we saw from the trailer like NPCs were hanging out in groups like in GTA 5 NPCs aren't together they're individual they are on pre-programmed paths cars drive into certain driveways everyone has a routine which is very simplistic not much has really changed from gta 4 to gta 5 but with gta 6 as we saw in the trailer people on their phones people were socializing together npcs mm. were taking photos of other npcs or spraying yeah. them with sunscreen like <laughs> yeah you know that one that one part on the beach where that guy's like spray tan that girl's like booty cheeks oh man that had me cracking up man that was so funny <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like part and this is so realistic this is man. what makes it that's what makes it real that's what makes it feel yeah. like a living breathing world and that's you know rockstar have always managed to get close to a living breathing world but they've never been able to emulate it and that's not no. because they didn't have the creativity or even the technology to do it it's because the, the hardware out there wasn't really up to scratch to make that happen and i think what mm. we're starting to see now especially with the advance of pc gaming the doors the, and the, the floodgates to the industry are now being opened by new consoles that are being made new pc specs and what can actually be done is now been experimented more and i think what we're going to see like long term anyway is that this can be expanded upon in the future an example of this would be the the traffic pattern that take to interactive filed about how cars can navigate the map and 
how a blockage in the road can cause like uh, traffic to go a completely different direction. And I did a full video breaking this down. This new like NPC AI pattern that basically has a start and finish point for a vehicle and these vehicles have routines and these vehicles are spawned into the map from miles away, not just from within your point of view. It means that if they can do that for vehicles, they can definitely do that for NPCs. And it's very similar to what we had in Red Dead Redemption 2 where if you followed an NPC around, they would be building a house, they'll be working, they'll be moving stuff around. Around. And when we add the density population that we're going to expect to see for GTA 6, it's mind boggling how they're going to do that, but really impressive. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like, and, and even and even the thing is as well, like that sounds just so awesome. All the stuff you just said and the technology they're seeming to in incorporate within GTA 6 within. Yeah. And also as well, like we discussed last podcast as well with Rage 9 as well, the, the Rockstar Advanced Game Engine, the ninth in Storm and like the possibilities are endless, man. Like the, the power of these consoles and Rockstar's implementation of their new, you know, iteration of the Rage Engine is going to gonna make for something really, really special. And from what we've already seen within Trailer 1, like that is on show already. Like the fact that that, you know, NPCs have the ability to, to pass a bottle to someone to spray someone's legs or to, you know, record someone or... Um, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, where he throws the bottle to the other guy, yeah. Yeah, like, that's a hard that's a hard thing to implement. Like, I don't think people know how hard that is in, in game development. That is a really, really, really difficult thing to do. It's insane. Like, the, the fact that... Because the thing is, you're dealing with three things there. You're dealing with, like, the physics from the game engine for the bottle, mm. but you're mm. also dealing with two sets of animations to yeah. have to finish a loop and start a loop at the same time. Yeah, it's very, very impressive, I, thinking how, how they can expand upon that. But also, as well, like, how useful stuff like this would be in the game like as we saw from red dead 2 we can interact with npcs we can greet them we can ask them how their day is going we can be antagonistic towards them mm. and you know in gta 5 the only real dialogue we have with npcs is pushing them over <laughs> I think you can actually, on in GTA 5, you can actually hit down on the, the D-pad. I think you can actually start talking to NPCs, but there's no, like, dialogue or anything like that. There's no different dialogue trees. Like, compared to RDR 2, when there's, like, you know, greet, antagonize, defuse, or threaten, um, rob, or, or whatever it is, that's going to be so much more expanded upon within 6. Like, there's going to be so many more layers in my, from, from what we can understand, from terms of the, the patterns that have been filed, but from what we've seen already, like, oh, man, I, I can't wait to, man, this is going to be so awesome. But also, as well, it, it adds to, I mean, for us, as YouTubers, it adds a creative layer where, for example, we could both do the exact same thing in the game and have different outcomes. So we could both interact mm. with the same in NPC in the same way, but we can both make a different choice on how we do it and have completely different outcomes to that event, which is insanely cool. Yeah, that's, that's right. And, and and that's the thing is as well, because I know in RDR 2, when anyone had like a different, or sorry, like the same interaction, like that would go like, you know, on obviously on social media, or YouTube or whatever, and everyone sort of had similar sort of outcomes. But I think within 6, is going to be much more varied Buried, um, and it's going to create for some very interesting and unique uh, situations. Yeah, 100%. Cool. Well, the next one is social media integration. Now, for my subscribers, you know that I've rinsed this topic. Um, <laughs> I think I've done about five videos on social media integration. But for me, I, you know, I feel like it's one of those topics that just isn't explored enough. I mean, no, no, it's not. Over half the trailer, or maybe just under half the trailer, was social media clips. And I feel like, you know, this is alluding to something that maybe we haven't explored and i, I want to break this down to kind of three quick points firstly this shows that rockstar are really trying to imitate the real world and the fact is that everything happens now if it doesn't happen through social media it hasn't happened mm. secondly as well like looking at rockstar's employment history and i covered this in a recent video they've been employing a lot more people in the app development space now the reasons for that we can't really come to any conclusions because there just isn't enough information but i mean rockstar have been acquiring for like five businesses a year and usually these are companies that specialize in certain bits of software for gaming nothing really that stands out but if you look at the employment history for app developers at the moment it looks like they're employing quite a few different app developers and why would that be and my theory on that is potentially in the real world uh, we may have an app on our phones that would allow us to maybe share or distribute content from within the game there's a theory that to create your own social media platform you need about 100 million users well we know that gt online has 200 million members rockstar could quite easily enter the social media space for gta 6 and compete with the likes of twitter facebook you know all of these people wow it's a bit of a hot take but i do think that rockstar rather than us sharing our clips 
to Twitter, to TikTok and to other platforms, they may give us our own space to share our own clips within their own platform that is way more accessible on our phones. But yeah, that's, wow. that's my hot take of the day. <laughs> Damn, that that would be that would be something, man. Like we that's something we we'll ne we have never seen before. Like the fact that Trailer One has already showcased that social media is going to be incorporated much more so than it has been in any previous GTA. Like GTA Five had a, a bit of social media wasn't that big back in 2013, anyways. But within six, yeah. like we literally saw everyone on their phone. Literally everyone was on their phone, which is pretty much showing you know how much you know we're pretty much glued on our screens literally every single moment of every single day. I, I think the thing is, and to your point as well, if, if that if Rockstar are thinking of incorporating some type of social media app that we can sort of utilize to communicate with other players around the world, that could be something that could be really interesting because that would be something that we've never ever seen before. So, man. Exactly. Um, I mean, the, yeah. the, the only app we've ever seen from Rockstar, well, actually, there's been a few, but like n none of them have been large scale. For GTA no. 5, they had that app where you could you know feed chop and play with chop it was like mm. a little <laughs> yeah, it was like right, a tamagotchi yeah. approach yeah. To, to chop <laughs> yeah. and we were also able to customize number plates and stuff and that was just part of the pre-hype for gta uh, gta 5 yeah. but it didn't actually serve any function and the, the problem is is any app that is purely for entertainment not function it has a lifespan any app that has the ability to operate with a functional ability is long lasting if rockstar can find a way to monetize an app that we all have on our phones to share our gta moments and maybe even communicate with the players that could definitely be a way that they can maybe monetize on a monthly subscription and we know that rockstar love making money so <laughs> could it be it could even be something that they do alongside gta plus or something i don't know that's that's my that's yeah. my theory that i'm gonna put out there could be there could be something that they could incorporate with gta plus in it, um, with this potential uh, theory that you're, you're, you're coming out with them incorporating a social media app to some degree similar to yeah like you said with GTA 5's um, app with the playing with chop so yeah that I would just yeah just have to wait and see what Rockstar um, do but it's it's definitely very very uh, intriguing to see how they go about it I also feel like as well maybe Rockstar have reached a potential ceiling with GTA Plus like I mean with G when GTA 6 comes out if they continue marketing GTA Plus yes they maybe might pick up another 10-20% new mm -hmm. members but gta plus only really appeals to avid players of the game but yeah, if true, they want to true. appeal to the casuals the people that would just hop online for an hour once a week with their mates i feel like maybe having some form of other way that they can monetize gta plus with an app or something like that would maybe allow them to branch out to that wider market of general casual players yes um, yes yes even me at the moment i'm not subscribed to gta plus at the moment no, I was, same me, I'm not either. <laughs> no I, w I was but i it got to the point where for the first like month i was i was seeing the value and then after that, I was like, well, I'm not really benefiting from having this. So let's pull away from it. And that's, you know, if they go with the same business model for GT Online version two, technically version three. But mm. if we go, if they go to the same model for this, uh, for GTA 6's online model, I think it has a cap of where GTA Plus can go and the amount of people that would actually pay for it. So yeah. How they monetize that is going to be really interesting. And and there's one more thing I want to quickly cover on this topic because I get a lot of questions about this. I don't dislike the fact that Rockstar monetize what they're doing. The fact that they've monetized what they're doing means we are getting GTA 6 in the capacity we're going to. Mm. I just would like to hope for GTA 6 that when they when we pay for stuff like shark cards or there are micro microtransactions within the game, hopefully the value we get is more than we get at the moment because just buying the equivalent of dollars with real money doesn't, for me as you know someone that wants a bit more from a game than just buying a new vehicle hopefully we get more value in the future yeah there has to be way way much more value like G the thing is i think rockstar know this anyways because when they came out with gta 5 they, they didn't know gta online was going to be a massive you know success they just did this multiplayer similar to gta 4 they just probably thought it was going to be like that where people just you know jump on and just muck around but the way that how it's you know come about now and, and you know this massive juggernaut that is gta online currently at the moment and the amount of money that has been made from it is ridiculous so they didn't know it was going to become the success it has and obviously they've adapted and updated the the game you know the multiplayer component over many years with you know additional content or uh, various missions and updates or whatever and within six there's going to be much more value in my opinion compared to how it is now you just buy some vehicles or business or or whatever it is um i would love to hope that rocks i definitely have a plan in mind from what i can understand to yeah 
add much more value. Yeah, 100%. And actually, they, um, I'm trying to find, I'll find it and put it on screen. But mm, there was a mm. statement made by, um, it wasn't a developer, it was someone at Rockstar. They made a statement mm. about their surprise at how GTA 5 Online took off. It was never part of the plan. It just happened to be something they could do to make some money and the world ran with it. You know, the, the reason why we haven't got GTA 6 earlier, the reason why we didn't get the, the DLC for GTA 5 is our fault. <laughs> like, because yeah, we... Yeah. We 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 gave that we gave the option to Rockstar to continue with GTA 5. And at the end of the day, the market speaks more than our opinions do. If the market is buying shark cards and paying for GTA Online content, then the market is right. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Cool. And this goes on to the next point, which I'll let you take the lead on. Uh, so yeah, the next one will our GTA 5 Online character progression? Well, sorry, will our GTA 5 Online characters, sorry, progress to GTA 6's Online, or will we have to start from scratch? Now, this is a particularly intriguing one. One because in my personal opinion anyways i doubt this is going to be the case we are 100 percent going to be starting from scratch i doubt rockstar games are going to allow us to somehow allow our characters to transfer over to gta 6's online reason being and now this is the, the first thing that i thought of anyways is that it's going to create such an unfair playing advantage for or unfair, unfair playing field for a lot of people a lot of players out there um reason being is because if you have someone that you know in gta 5's online has like you know um, billion dollars a bunch of assets and businesses or whatever and then they go into gta 6's online they compete with a level one then how unfair is that so um rockstar probably are not going to do that and they're just going to make everyone start scratch it's a new city new environment new game new set of consoles uh, and i don't even know how it would be possible for them to to transfer the characters our characters at the moment over to six um, so yeah, what's your thoughts on it? I'm um, I'm with you 100%. I think there's there's some other things to consider as well. Like, mm. why would you want your character to go over with <laughs> how things right, are yeah. looking? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. With how things are looking for GTA 6 at the moment. It looks like we're probably going to get more in-depth character customization. So why would you want to bring your boring GTA 5 character over? It doesn't. Yeah. You're not getting any additional value for that. And then there's mm. also like the other thing to think about there as well is you bought shark cards for gta 5 and the online component for gta 5 you didn't buy shark cards for gta 6 and mm, you know mm. uh, maybe i'm biased because I, I i just i overall i'm more of a story guy i don't really i'm not a massive fan of gta online but i i do think that if people have loads of money and loads of assets and stuff within gta online currently and then i load up into vice city and I'm on. I load into the online mode, and all of a sudden, there's a dude there with, you know, a Mark II oppressor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just logging put, straight out. <laughs> you just bloody freaking <laughs> bloody blast a rocket on you. Oh my god. Yeah, hundred oh. percent. Like I'm, I'm, I'm. I don't. I think that the way that online is going to be monetized, like for example, the vehicles we're going to see and all of the assets we're going to see. I do think that yeah, there'll be some crossover. Maybe a couple of vehicles from five mm. online mm. and six online. But I don't think that there's going to be like this big multi-platform thing i think maybe that there'll be an option to like load in like you maybe when you go to online you have an option to go to you know gta 5 or gta 6 maybe you can choose your location and they make a smart way of crossing those things and, but i don't think that money will be able to be no, carried no over way. in assets no. no and then and then also as well you got to understand that they've got to make money out of this so they're not going to allow people's assets or their money and that to transfer across because what, what's the value going to be in you know purchasing the new stuff in in, in vice city or whatever um when you don't necessarily when you when you have a bunch of money already like you know why should i buy another shark card or whatever i've already got money from gta 5s online you know what i mean so yeah exactly and i think yeah. you know obviously the on that point it obviously benefits rockstar and rockstar are not gonna they're not gonna allow it to be cross-platform well not cross-platform no. but they're not gonna allow it to be transferable mm. because they want money but at the same time i think like it just makes the world a more interesting place when everyone starts at the same point of course give it a year it will be completely knocked out of whack <laughs> but um but like at the end of the day it will make the experience more special and, and the reality is is a lot of people after the first like month of gta 6 being out they're not going to be going back to gta 5 unless uh, if it, unless they don't have gta 6 no one's going to be even now like the only reason people are now going back to gta 4 is because it feels a bit more special than gta 5 because mm. everyone's bored gta 5 yeah thing is as well they've they've ran gta 5 into the gta 5 online sorry like it's been going on for so long now so they 
they've covered so much of the of the map or whatever. So I doubt. I just. I just. It's just. I just doubt they're going to transfer the characters, our characters, over to six online. But also, as well, I think in addition to this, we, we should also keep in mind that how would Rockstar even do it anyways? Like, how would yeah, they transfer ga- all the of- game engines are different? <laughs> yeah, the game exactly right. The game engines are completely different. So how would they transfer all the the vehicle models and all of that from five online into six? Like, I don't even know. That would be a nightmare. Um, yeah. from a developmental point of view. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think as well, like, um, the idea of transferring stuff across won't really benefit you as a person in the game anyway because there's like uh, for example the monetization model for gta 6 is going to be very different to the monetization model for gta 5 gta 5 was never built to be an online game it was built yeah. that map yeah. is designed around the story mode yeah. whereas i feel like in gta 6 a lot of the buildings that we're going to see mm. are going to be like okay well this building's where in online characters will be able to spend money on this thing yes like yeah. i reckon they're going to sell more shark cards but that's because you can buy more things other than like weaponry or houses or all of this i reckon the things that we're going to be able to buy there's going to be so much more diversity like even even like this talk of gyms and like um the north man, point mall, the Vice point mall. yeah that'd exactly sick, like man. this, oh, this man. Oh. and that actually that, oh, that so cool. actually ties on to one of the points that come a bit later in this video about like um lifestyle choices and stuff but we'll get onto that a bit later but at the moment there's nothing in my opinion i i i will i'll stand up and hold my hands up and say that i'm probably <laughs> wrong on this but i don't think there's anything valuable to buy in gta other than vehicles i'm i'm excited for the next point oh, i love this yes one. yes i love this one easter eggs we may see in gta 6 for example the bermuda triangle i'll let i'll let you take the lead on this one yeah so if any of you guys don't know what the Bermuda Triangle is. It's um it's a region located in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean uh, near Florida. Apparently, um the, the theory out there is that this is apparently where ships, planes, and people are alleged to have vanished with no traces whatsoever found, following these reported disappearances. Apparently, over 70 reports of missing ships and aircraft have been yeah noted. Um, so this is going to be something that's really interesting. The fact that there may be an Easter egg in regards to the Bermuda Triangle, like that gets me so hyped. I don't. What's your thoughts on it? Oh mate, I'm so like you know a lot. A lot of the subscribers of the channel will know that I I have an obsession with boats and planes. So I just love <laughs> both those things. And cyber, considering cyber boats, <laughs> cyber boat is happening. <laughs> And, and considering that, like, so from the trailer, we could see in almost every single shot of the trailer, there was a plane in the sky. And then on top of that, like, let's just say 40% of the shots had boats in them. And there was a lot of boats. Like, yes, there was yes. just so many. And where it's geographically located, where Vice City is located, if there isn't a reference to the Bermuda Triangle, I will genuinely be shocked. Yes, yeah, like there has same. to be. And also in GTA 5, we had the Mount Chiliad mystery. So why mm. can't we have a a reminiscent of a oh, like something that yeah. resembles Bermuda yeah. Triangle? Because it would add so many strangers and freaks. It will add so many cool offshoots from the main story. It will add so many cool things and online. But yeah, oh, I'm I'm get I'm getting I'm getting carried away <laughs> thinking about it. Mate, the possibilities are endless. Do you know Do you know that uh, YouTuber called Strange Man who goes over all the Easter eggs and all? I don't know. If yes. You're familiar with him. Yeah, he's he's a cool YouTuber. Shout out to him. Um, he pretty much goes over all the Easter egg secrets and all those sort of things. And man, like within GTA Six, if they're gonna have something that's gonna be sort of reminiscent of reminiscent of a Bermuda Triangle mystery similar to the Mount Chiliad mystery, like man, it is gonna be so hype. I I, I mean, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's uh, Rockstar can get really creative with it, I reckon. 100%. But also as well, like, obviously, as we saw from, you know, a few bits of information we have available and what we saw in the leaks, um, there is some slightly different weather patterns in the game. And even in the trailer, there's one shot of, like, a, a gas station in the background. Yes. With, um, yeah. Like, the, there's puddles on the floor, rain. It looks like we're going to get some bit more like more adverse weather so the mm. idea that we can you know jump on our boat and head out to sea and then be caught in a tricky situation oh. just makes for like a really cool experience like it's just Damn. like it doesn't need to give you any value other than entertainment or intrigue yes. like yeah. th- that's that's the sort of gameplay i love where the fun of it isn't the mission itself the fun of it is actually the concept behind it and how diverse and realistic it is and i you know with it being based where it's based they have been given a tool set to make the coolest bermuda triangle ripoff they can and if they don't do that they are missing a massive audience yeah yeah yeah. agreed agreed and the thing is like rockstar is so unique like the fact that you know they do easter eggs pretty much all the time in any in any title that they come out with and if they if they miss 
this Bermuda Triangle sort of um, mystery. Um, it, yeah, I, I just, I just hope that I just hope they have it in, man. I hope they have it in. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I, I also think as well, like you know, on the topic of Easter eggs, you know, I, I've you know on my live streams, I get asked a lot of questions about stuff like Scarface, the Vasetti Mansion. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I feel like the Scarface yeah. references maybe not, may, they might not be as prevalent because mm. GTA Vice City was based in that time the, period in the eighties. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but I do think like in the trailer that one shot at night where we could see um, like the boats and looking over the uh, the island like the leader mm. island and stuff like that yeah the venetian um, venetian uh crossways i think yes it is. yeah yes um you know there's a mansion there that in on the right hand side that looks a bit like the Vassetti mansion mm, i mm. think there will of course be a throwback to the Vassetti mansion but you know there's some theories about how the universes work and how it might be it might be based in a different universe entirely to to the original vice city yeah. but you know stuff like red dead redemption 2 there's references in gta 5 to red dead 2 you got um jack marston's book um on the shelf like in one of the in one of the houses like mm. there's so many different references that are being thrown around there will definitely yeah. be so many easter eggs i mean in the trailer it looks like lance vance was in the trailer as well like yeah i saw that the, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that's right but all like, the um pedestrians walking on the the street there and it was like a guy in like a purple sort of suit look look like lance vance hey yeah exactly and obviously we know it's not because the time yeah. periods just don't add yeah, up that's but right. yeah that's right it's, it's it's an easter egg it's a nod it's a yeah. you know it, it's a reference i think maybe we might even that's get some references service. Yeah, exactly so, yeah, and i think yeah. i think we yeah. might get some references to tommy Vizzetti as well obviously ray Liotta has passed away yeah. um and i feel like there'll be some form of homage even though rockstar have said repeatedly how difficult he was to work with yeah. <laughs> um but like there, there'll definitely be references and nods to it like the the universe rules don't apply when it comes to easter eggs it's just mm. having some fun with with stuff in the game yeah i i can see in terms of the ray liotta reference obviously he was the voice actor of tommy Vassetti. that there could be a situation where they do respect uh, pay their respects and homage to him saying that he's part he passed away i think it was 2022 passed away um yeah. like even if it's like i know in gta 5 in los santos there was actually on a park bench there was a plaque on a park bench for a rockstar employee that passed away um they put his name on there so whether they do something like that where they even name like a, a street or something after him or even like i don't know liotta drive or, or something like that I think they could definitely exactly. do something really interesting. And I think they will, because at the end of the day, no matter how, you know, there may have been difficulties working with him, whatever, he is a crucial part to Rockstar being where they are today. He's also mm. the reason why they don't use big celebrities for main roles anymore. But mm, yeah, like, yeah. he's a crucial part to their story. And obviously, like for me, like the first Grand Theft Auto I played was Vice City. And for me, it's like a big part of my childhood and a big part of the legacy for Vice City. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think there'll be a nod to it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Hopefully we see it. And do you want to go on to the next point? Yes, yeah, so celebrity appearances. Um, now, this is something that has been a staple within each GTA iteration. We've seen so many different examples over the many um, over the many years within GTA. Uh, some examples include uh, Ricky Gervais, if any of you guys know who he is. He was in GTA 4's uh, Comedy Club. Um, also, Phil Collins as well was in Vice City. Where he did like the um, performance on the stage, like a stage performance. Um, I think that was Vice City Stories, actually, sorry. And Samuel L. Jackson obviously played Officer Tenpenny in San Andreas. Cara Delevingne was on was the host of Nonstop Pop FM. Kenny Loggins as well, who does the song for um, uh, Danger Zone for Top Gun. He was the host on LS, uh, LS Rock Radio. And there's also been other numerous uh, celebrities as well. I, love, now, the I love Kenny Loggins. Yeah, he's oh, he's good, man. He's good. Now, the, th the thing is, the question is, what type of celebrities are we going to see within GTA 6? What, what appearances are we going to see? Well, I think we, we can start off with... You know, obviously, we have to we have to say here this is theory, speculation, and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, um, of course. You know, I can see people in the comments right now typing. This is, this is just theory. <laughs> we know, we know. The, the rocks are being GTA Six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You heard it here first. Well, actually, yeah. So, the dark Dark Vipers playing Lucia. We know that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> um, so the first thing is uh let's go through t-pain so t-pain yeah he was well it's a video on instagram that's on uh tiktok it's everywhere to be honest it's done yeah, around yeah, yeah. um a lot of people are asking him why he doesn't play no pixel anymore now no pixel is a role-playing server for gta 5 if you don't know and uh, he was said that he was told by rockstar that he can't play no pixel anymore since rockstar acquired um cfx to re which own 5m and red m they're saying it's a conflict of interest and he's saying that they've said that because he's in gta 6 and when asked more about it firstly when he says it the guy that's in the background on the shot looks at him 
like you shouldn't have said that oh no <laughs> and then <laughs> he kind of looks at him and goes uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he's a Florida native he's mm. he's from Florida I think it's Tallahassee Tallahassee yeah, I, I, think I, I think that's right yeah I think you're right actually yeah. um, he's from, you know an, an outskirts of Florida he's, from, he's a Florida native he's from Florida um, he's also a very talented individual you know rap he now does country music and soul music like he's he is a staple of the music scene in Florida and I think it's potentially quite likely that he could be a radio host of some sort in the game um, I don't think he's going to be a main character no, but no. if he if he is going to be in there I do think that a cameo maybe as a side character or a radio host is probably the most likely yeah that would be that would be pretty cool like even if he's just some um, but yeah like you said probably maybe most likely a radio host or somehow maybe contributing a little bit maybe more than that as a perhaps maybe just like a supporting sort of character we just see on the street or something we bump into him I think that'd be pretty funny but he could maybe be recording some some music with Rockstar, you know, we don't know. Potentially. Um, the, the other option there as well is, you know, in the trailer, we saw that there was a pickup truck with vinyl records in the back. There was a yeah, few references to right. vinyl records. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. You know, there's a few references, especially in the leaks as well, as references to like DJs, um, yeah. nightclub DJs, nightclub performers. It looks like the, the, the Florida music scene is, I don't think it's going to be a huge part of the game, but it's mm. definitely a reference in the game. Um, mm. So there's maybe some way, shape or form, but also as well, like Rockstar's become quite heavily integrated with the music scene for gta 5 you know featuring Doc, dr dre in a mission yes yes like, yes yes as far as cameos get i can't think of much bigger than that yeah. <laughs> so. i could even i could even see a situation there this is probably going well i mean it's not necessarily off topic too much but we could even be seeing sort of in-game live events with celebrities like like in this is probably going more maybe gta 6 online route but like an example i can even envision in my head could be like t-pain maybe going on the DJ, dj set playing the music or something uh, they'd probably be pre-recorded or something like that um and maybe there could be a situation where he does something like that where we could go into a nightclub and t-pain music will be playing not just t-pain obviously probably maybe other musicians as well now that's just the theory that i'm throwing out there it's not that, that that's anything um obviously concrete information or anything but it's just something interesting to to think about but there's maybe. definitely there's definitely some weight to that because i mean a lot of people and it's you know a surprising amount of people when i do my q a live streams a lot of people ask about live events and live music in mm. Mm. Uh, GTA 6 because obviously other games do have live events and live music yep. and also Fortnite. Fortnite is a prime example yeah and it also it's a it's a way that Rockstar could monetize it they could sell digital tickets for for in-game money so if oh, you spend man, a that'd be sick. That'd yeah be, you spend a thousand dollars in game or whatever it might Damn. be obviously to get that to get that money in the game you're either playing it or buying shark cards so it's a way that they can siphon off money in the game into actual things where they pay artists or for example live events where you actually physically have to pay money or a subscription or something to get access to these exclusive events maybe gta plus will allow you to see live music in the game um wow yeah <laughs> yeah i mean we're, we're, yeah. we're getting down a rabbit hole of yeah, potential 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 but you know it's something worth considering and it is. you know like a lot of people are saying well his music might feature in the game or they wouldn't be working directly with him if his music is in the game usually they go yeah. through licensing agencies and the artist yeah. nine times out of ten is even aware their music's in the game so mm. yeah that's right that's right yeah a few more things actually just before we move on to the next topic was um school schoolboy q schoolboy q was another yes. rapper that came out do you want to go over it or do you want me to start with it um i'll i'll, I'll start off with it so obviously there's a few yep. tweets in reference to it um you know a lot of people asked if they'd be seeing him in um gta 6 and obviously he responded back to that saying that he'll be there what that means we don't know but um unless unless you have any of the different insights to that yeah look it may it could just be it could just be saying that just to get some clicks gain some clout or whatever who knows but yeah we are being. i know i know that um this is a, a point that i actually in terms of the preparation of this podcast for today that i don't know if you remember in the september 22 leaks you know when lucia's walking in the club one of his songs is actually playing now that song is actually in gta 5 already on ifruit radio it's called um num num juice i'm pretty sure um yeah so like that like i said it's probably just a placeholder but maybe that could be something that we could be potentially seeing you know his music being featured somehow to some degree i don't know potentially as well like also when he replied back to that tweet i i read that slightly differently i read it as in you know asking if he's going to be there nah, i read that as in yeah, yeah, like, okay. he's going to be there playing it oh, like right okay yeah so do you know what i, I mean thought, yeah. like yeah, yeah yeah true true there's so many different ways you can look at it yeah yeah exactly and that you know <laughs> that could be his very thing that means that he's not breaking nda because there is yeah. multiple ways that it could yeah. that it'd yeah, be true. perceived um true. i true. think that the the, the t-pain lead is a much stronger one yeah um yeah, yeah it is. than the scoreboard q one yeah it is 
Um, also, yeah. <laughs> do you know? Yeah. Do you know? Sorry, do you know when you sent me across the notes with the the the, the, um, the topics to discuss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you put scoobly, scoobly Q. Oh, oh my god, really? Did I? Oh my days! Oh, Mate, it's been cracking me up for the past two minutes reading that. <laughs> Schoolboy Q, why has he got a rapper name like that, man? Just oh, do a different yeah, name. Just make, make, it a different name. <laughs> make it easy. Make it easier for me, man. Oh, whatever. Right, oh, and um, this next point, uh, I want to credit Elliot on Discord for this suggestion. So on my Discord, there's a video ideas tab, and someone called Elliot put this idea in there, and I think it's a really good point for us to discuss. And it's how lifestyle choices affect the character, whether they're drinking or eating too much for example and from the leaks we could see that jason and lucia look different in different shots and mm. there's a few points here that i want to touch base on firstly the leaks you know the character models they're using aren't finished correct yeah they're still in development like we, we don't know exactly dimensions and everything um i do think it's going to be more likely that the characters are going to be able to lose weight gain weight um grow hair very similar to what we had in red dead redemption 2 where like your hair can grow your beard grows and stuff like that um i do think that you know rockstar back in san andreas they introduced the idea of gaining mm. and losing weight mm. and it's not really something that they have played with properly since so i think that maybe the idea and concept that if we do have things like restaurants bars and stuff in gta 6 <laughs> our characters could visit those locations and potentially lose weight gain weight go to the mm. gym mm. Um, and this also then opens up all those different monetization options for example you know to, to lose weight in the game you may have to do certain things or for example you, there may be options to get things like plastic surgery if you're a, a woman in the game make parts of your body bigger like there's so many different things for like customizing your character that could actually be way more realistic rather than just making your character fatter you've got to do things to get there yeah and that, and, that, and that's the thing is as well like like you said with gta san andreas they've, they've obviously had that weight loss you know gaining mechanic weight gain mechanic um could we be seeing that return obviously we don't know at the moment but seeing that we saw the you know the leak footage back in in 22 to. It, it it may it may occur with that we it, could we see it reintroduced um and now to the to the point that you also said as well these are all obviously different stages of development that these you know these leak footage this leaked leak clips that did come out so we don't know that like some of the clips that we saw from like jason for example there was a few clips where he was much more toned and more vascular and then there was other clips where he's more skinnier whether that's something that they're looking to add as sort of a mechanic or a system or is that just sort of the development timeline that we've seen from the first first clip that we saw maybe that was like 2020 or something like that or the next clip was 21 and they were a bit more progressed in terms of the development it's hard to necessarily say yeah no 100 percent. and th this is the thing like with the leaks everything is a pinch of salt because mm. there's so many things in the leaks that are like models from other rockstar games and what they were doing in some of those elite clips were literally just testing things you know yeah, they, they may yeah. have they may have loaded it into a part of the map that won't even be in the game they were just testing ideas and concepts and sharing them with their colleagues to to get feedback and that's i mean the leaks came from a group chat on slack the messaging platform so you know those leaked clips aren't in context of the game they're in context of testing and development i think it's quite likely that we'll be able to like change our character size and weight and stuff but the leaks don't show us that i think it's just like assumption that can make us believe that yeah and we don't know how far rocks are going to take it as well like how much will that impact the story as well like we're not going to be having like jason like 300 to i don't know 150 kilos or something like that when we see like how's, how's that gonna work like you know what i mean um yeah i, I yeah. don't think they're gonna take I mean, it also like yeah. i'm sure like Lucia's thick. We, I don't think she's gonna be super, super, super thick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> especially some like, but that's something else as well. Like the physics of the game. Mm. You know, like if, if for example Lucia is absolutely massive because we make her absolutely massive maybe if she yeah. has to jump through a building or something she wouldn't be able to do that so how oh, would wow yeah but also as well like we've seen that characters are different heights and stuff and mm. you know yes um, yes from, yes from the leaks we also saw that obviously we're not sure if this is in the game or if it's just development but like vehicle seats could be moved in and out steering wheel position could be moved yeah, and that was sick that, it's, yeah. yeah like that could be more based and more modular around um like the character size and shape mm. uh, so how that will affect gameplay and how that could potentially limit gameplay would be probably a big challenge to rockstar yeah there's so many different factors to take into account as well so i'm sure that's not easy at all from a development point of view so yeah we just yeah, yeah. like we just have to we just have to wait and see how far rocks are going to take it really yeah 100%. The next thing is relationships. Now, I dropped a video on this today 
um, it's really difficult to make a video on something that could include naughty behavior mm, and still mm. keep monetized on YouTube. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that video was very short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'll let I'll let you take the lead on this. Yeah. So from what we understand, anyways, there's a lot of different. Um, mechanics and systems that we from what we can understand that rocks are looking to implement with this bonnie and clyde like du duo with jason and lucia in terms of the leaked files that came from the september 2022 leaks um there's a lot of different things that we have seen in regards to this a lot of different world events um a few examples as well that we'll touch on in a moment um and also you know what we have seen officially from the trailer as well obviously very briefly it was only one minute or so so not much to really go off but it seems that this dynamic between the two is going to be much more interesting obviously from a relationship point of view because Rockstar have never done this before. They have never done a GTA with a, a male and a female protagonist. They've never done a love story uh, situation or relationship before. So, um, yeah, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I feel like, so in, we won't go far back as San Andreas because that mm. is too far back. But mm, if maybe if you start back. with like GTA 4, obviously Nico could yeah. date multiple women. Yeah. Um, yep, yep, yep. In GTA 5, obviously we could meet ladies in the, the Vanilla Unicorn Club. <laughs> um, but the relationship, it wasn't part of the story. Whereas, with GTA 6, the focus of the story, from what we understand, is going to be around a dynamic duo or relationship. Mm. Um, what this could mean for like character development and some of the challenges we face in the game because normally in gta games the biggest challenge we face is our enemy is stopping us from doing a thing whereas with gta 6 it could be the personal relationship with jason and lucia that prevents something from happening um it also makes for some very interesting endings for the game now we know how bonnie and clyde ended um yep Yep. For GTA 6, you know, it could be a similar ending. I feel like that maybe might be a bit too predictable. Um, but maybe we're put in a position where we may have to sever the relationship with Jason and Lucia to get to some other alternate goal or ending. Um, but also as well, like we've seen in Red Dead Redemption 2 that mm. Rockstar can experiment with how the world reacts to you, like whether yeah. you have good karma yeah. or bad karma. Yeah, yeah. And, you <laughs> yeah. know, that's always been like, for example, Arthur Morgan, you know, people may not like him because he's always negative or mm. acts negative to other people, or they might love him because he's always positive and he does good things and greets people. Mm. But at the same time, that being applied directly to two lead roles in the game, like if one of our lead characters doesn't like the other lead character because they're relationship is turbulent because you're playing as jason and you've spent a lot of your time with uh ladies of the night <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i'm having yeah, to really yeah. careful about what i say here <laughs> that is a good i want to stay monetized <laughs> it's the, the, the pg g rated version <laughs> yeah this is really it. difficult <laughs> Um, oh, but yeah, like, for example, like, would you be able to annoy Lucia by doing things as Jason and vice versa? Mm, mm. Yeah, well, even, yeah, that, that's right, vice versa, because it could even be the other way around where Lucia could be fooling around with, with other men, you know? So that could really play into, obviously, the dynamic between the two in terms of, you know, them arguing over something, that a situation that has occurred or whatever. And like you said as well, with the Red Dead Redemption 2 sort of, like, the camps like how we engage and like with other camp members um like you, you know there was the situations in that that camp for example where if you do something positive the the camp members will say oh great job arthur or if you do something like really negative to the point where they just knock you out <laughs> um yeah i knock knock arthur out so yeah I, particularly interesting to see how rockstar will build upon those uh systems that have been implemented within rdo2 and then of course within within gta6 so also as well actually you know those world events obviously that came out within the the leaked Yes. Uh, clips. Obviously, there was a bunch of them. Um, a few examples. One specifically that I saw was the fact that you could actually alter um, the radio station songs. So um, that could maybe have a bit of a different impact on the outcome of the situation occurring. Let's say you're driving as Jason or Lucille or vice versa, whatever it is. Um, there was, the, from what we understand, there was some, in the leaked files, there was like pragmatic cool, uh, pragmatic chaotic or romantic cool or romantic chaotic. Could this mean that maybe we could play a song that could dictate what occurs next within the story or within that particular mission or something? Thing, that could be something that would be yeah very intriguing to see how rockstar go about it uh, yeah exactly i think that's a different way of looking at like for example in gta 4 whenever nico took a girl on a date there would be certain activities she'd enjoy certain cars that she'd like to be picked up in um it could be very similar that for example like if you're driving in the car with Lucia and Lucia doesn't like a certain style of music or a certain song, um, the radio station might get changed to fit yeah, the vibe of them being together. Yeah. But also as well, like for example, if you're in a police chase, you know, 
radio station could change i think i think that's like another dynamic element which represents the mood of jason and lucia rather yeah, than just yeah like i think the overall impression i'm getting from the relationship dynamics based on the information we've seen is that it's not linear there's so many different variables that can affect that relationship between yes, jason and lucia yes 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 i, I think we're going to be seeing so many different types of non-linear options compared to previous pre previous rockstar titles i don't know if you saw that video that nakey jakey made on red Dead redemption 2 in terms of rdr2 being too linear have you seen that video that came out like many yes, years ago i, don't know. I did yes yeah um makey jake is so good yeah he's 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 really good shout out to him um there could be rockstar could potentially be planning to incorporate some more non-linear options maybe having maybe that having much more of a uh, many more options in regards to that rather than sort of the linear approach that they've been going for with a lot of the you know different gta's so this could be uh, it could be the dynamic between the two and and the different options that we could have as the player could dictate how the story could occur how many different endings could we get you know like there's so many different factors to take into account but that's the thing as well like rockstar you know, give or take, has about somewhere between five to 6,000 employees mm. um, employed at the moment. Let's just say like 75% of them are working on GTA 6 and they've been working on it for a number of years. It's very possible that, you know, by the third mission, we can make a decision which completely changes the story. Oh, there could be man. two Damn. two stories taking place in, you know, we've seen it, you know, examples of it with GTA 5, the three possible yeah. endings, but yeah. that means that they've only got to make really three missions to dictate the ending of the game obviously mm. if they make it earlier on in the game then you've got to create three complex storylines but i think uh do you know detroit become human that game yes 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 yes, yes, yes. so i f i think that you know the fact is is like there's five different ways to get to the same point and there may be two endings but you know you can take different paths to get to those different endings that game was really impressive and we know rockstar is a way more powerful developer in the terms of the way that they can create stories i feel like the detroit become human aspect where there could be like the end of the mission could be exactly the same but the way we get to the end of the mission could be four yeah. or five or six different alternate routes yeah. that yeah, would just yeah. make the game have that replayability factor where you could play it through 20 times and still have a different experience yeah yeah I, yeah i think if they take inspiration from that yeah, detroit become human is a really good example um of different sort of branching alternate endings or whatever um throughout so yeah um that sounds it sounds all very exciting so yeah we have to, we have to wait and see right so the next thing we're going to talk about because i got rinsed for this but i want to <laughs> defend myself i want to defend myself so i did a video called 164 hidden details in the gta 6 trailer in that video i refer to the bikini girl on the balcony as <laughs> lucia now a lot of people have said it isn't lucia and i can see why the lips are slightly different size the nose is the same mm. and all of the moles on the face are in the exact same position apart from one which doesn't exist now my theory on this is firstly you see is clearly wearing lipstick in in that shot her lips do look more plump now that could be because of lipstick or she could have had some work done on her lips as i mentioned earlier in the video that you know we've just been able to potentially make our characters fatter mm, thinner mm. potentially get things like implants like if you're a woman yeah, like yeah there yeah, could yeah, be yeah. so many different options to customize the you know the aesthetic of our character but also makeup is a thing um, um yeah. but there's some things you know the earrings are the same as lucia's wearing in the trailer when she's in the car um i personally think it is lucia i'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on this uh yeah you know when the trailer came out i was like umming and ahhing myself i'm like mm, maybe it's not maybe it is now that i'm like i've been looking at it obviously we've seen that shot so many times right and we've yeah, that it's probably from what we can understand it's actually the most um viewed part of the trailer <laughs> um yeah i wonder uh, most why pause, most pause yeah that's right yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, so uh, there was so many people out there saying like, oh, she doesn't have as many moles or something like that. Like, uh, yeah, it's from what I can see anyways, like uh, it's the same sort of skin texture of that sort of like olivey type of um, Caucasian uh, complexion. Um, also the fact as well is that she has, yeah, like you said, maybe the, like her lips are much more plump. Maybe there's that could lean into the fact that we could be seeing, I don't know, plastic surgeons. I don't know what I'm uh, like, there could be Botox or something like that that could be introduced into the game or something like that. That, so um so one more thing that i just want to add very quickly there mm. the shot where the lady is hanging out of the car and she's got her arms in the air at the very end of that shot you can see the person that's driving the car and that person looks a lot like jason um now yeah. if this person isn't lucia it could be jason having an affair and maybe that plays back into our last point about relationship dynamics mm. but obviously in my p 
opinion, it looks a bit like Lucia, and obviously she's bleached her hair, um, and yeah, she's had yeah, maybe yeah, some probably. work done on her lip. Yeah, when you go to Miami, and hmm. you're very rich, and you're driving around in very high-end sports cars, and you're a woman who appears to be <laughs> in her late 20s, maybe, maybe yes. early 30s, and your new money, that's what people spend money on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. She maybe maybe that could be like Lucia getting caught up in the money and the I don't know. She could be just going about doing different things, naughty things. Maybe who knows? But yeah, it's um. <laughs> like, it, like what? Like maybe a white powder or some sort. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> throwing ideas out there. Oh I heard the flower harvest is great this time of the year. <laughs> oh my god, that's oh man, that's that's too funny. Yeah, it's there's so many different things we can talk about and take away from it. But oh, I'd say I'd say it's likely her. Um, from, yeah, I think, that's my that's my verdict on it. In my opinion, it looks far too similar to her, and it wouldn't make sense if it wasn't her, unless there's a second female protagonist. The fact that she appears to be in two shots, it's just it seems like a, a bit of a stretch, and it, it seems a bit too confusing for Rockstar yeah, to, to yeah, add that agreed, in. Agreed. Um, especially as this trailer was primarily about Vice City and Lucia. Yeah. Um, yeah. The next trailer we can assume is going to be about Jason. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this kind of leads on to the last point. If you, you can start this one, if you want to. Um. Yeah. So this news actually came out. Ooh, uh, probably about an hour ago as of the recording of this podcast. That um, Kotaku, who's a, a website and outlet, that came out saying that apparently GTA 6 may be getting delayed to late 2025 or slipping into 2026. This is the title they came up with. They go GTA 6 production reportedly falling behind. Rockstar urges staff to return to office to avoid the delay. There was numerous things that they stated saying that um, it seems that early 2025 is is currently the goal, that they're aiming for uh, GTA 6 to arrive in spring 2025, but they seem like they're contradicting a lot of the things that they're saying, saying that it's it, it, they're aiming for early 2025 at the end of their article, and then they're also saying that it's gonna they're aiming for GTA 6 to arrive in spring 2025, so it, it seems pretty, yeah, like I said, contradictive in what, what they're stating in regards to this Kotaku article. Tom Henderson came out with a, a post as well, do you want to get into that yeah like i mean so first thing is my dms have blown up over the past hour i've actually yeah, i've yeah. put i've put my phone and my computer into do not disturb mode yeah, because yeah. so many questions are getting asked about this right, yeah, um yeah. firstly kotaku have i mean usually they're pretty reliable but they're only really reliable because they regurgitate a lot of stuff from bloomberg yeah. and other other yeah. trustworthy sources it looks like from my opinion they've regurgitated what's been said by bloomberg about mm. um to avoid delays rockstar employees are going back to work and obviously this was a fair few weeks ago but what kotaku have done they've picked up on it and they have said to avoid delays rockstar employees are going back to the office and then what they've done is they've taken the contrary to that and said well if they don't go back to the office it means it's going to be delayed and obviously if rockstar are aiming for early 2025 if the game for some reason is delayed obviously it's going to fall late 2025 and mm. in the article it says if it's delayed again it could be early 26 now that is just maths um yeah, obviously yeah. if it's delayed and it's delayed again that's obviously what it means but they've been very very careful about how they've worded it because yeah reading yeah. between the lines what it says is is it could be delayed which is true it could be but the way that the article is headlined is to make you believe that it's going to be and what we've seen yeah. so far especially from yeah. tom henderson who's probably one of the most him and jason schreier are like the two go-to guys for gaming news the game is aiming for early 2025 from what we understand there is no reason to believe it would be delayed but if it is mm. going to be delayed obviously it would look like a september october release but it, yeah. we're not seeing any signs that going to be delayed yeah yeah and, that, and, that, and that's the thing is as well like currently at the moment we just have to keep in mind all the official information that we know one from take two interactive obviously rockstar games is parent company the fact that they're expecting around sort of 1.7 billion increase within fiscal 25 once again from march um uh of this year to april of next year and also the fact as well that rockstar's vice president jen colby said literally only just close to a month ago that they're saying that the changes that they've made in terms of getting all the staff members uh, all the rockstar employees back to the office Monday to Friday starting in April they, she said that making these changes now puts us in the best position to deliver the next GTA at the level and quality um, and polish we know it requires um, so and the fact that it you know it's GTA 6 is in the end of its developmental stages at the moment obviously things can change in development it's not that anything is 100% of course it's going to be early 2025 but currently as it stands officially it is still from what we understand early 20, early 2025 so it, it, look a pen, potential delay can happen we obviously can't rule that out in my opinion, I think I think 2025 itself, forget 2026, but 2025 is pretty much guaranteed. And that's the reason why Rockstar's trailer one didn't say like 
spring or fall in it mm. is because they're just protecting themselves because yeah. if for yeah. example hypothetically they said it's coming in spring or early 2025 and for some reason for reasons unknown to themselves it had to be delayed the impact of that wouldn't just be us getting the game later it would be investors pulling out take to interactive yeah because i mean we saw it in the last earnings call rocks uh, take to interactive share price dropped by 10 percent, and nothing mm. was really bad said in it other than mm. like some basketball games not doing what was it like nba 2k or something like that yeah not doing, something like that yeah yeah, yeah it's something about like that release cycle not being up to scratch or something and that lost 10 percent of share value so a game being delayed by six months could be detrimental to the performance of uh take to interactive share price so the reason why they've said 2025 is it's very likely that it's going to be early 2025 but worst case scenario it's going to be late and if it was going to from day one be late in 2025 and risk going into 2026 they wouldn't have put 2025 at all on the trailer yeah that's right that's right i think they're pretty confident in the 2025 release whether it's early mid or late obviously they probably still don't know they're aiming for early 2025 as we know at the moment um it just depends on how obviously what what can change throughout the year a lot of things can can impact it so yeah it's yeah. it's interesting to say just going back to what tom henderson said in regards to that kataka article i just want to say what he said he goes i'm not even sure what to make of the kataka, kataka article in gta 6 no info is new and it seems to just be stirring the pot based of bloomberg report and that's to your point from what you said um yep. that it pretty much just regurgitating what bloomberg said and trying to twist it to get clicks and that so that's what i think anyways yeah and also at the end of that as well he said um subscribe if you enjoyed the cybervice podcast <laughs> <laughs> hit subscribe everyone you gotta follow all our episodes come on 100 <laughs> percent. that wraps up today's episode oh yeah we've been going for an hour and 20 minutes nearly yeah, it's been actually much more, well, much longer than last podcast. I hope you guys enjoy the, the longer, well, I think we made probably 20 minutes or so more, I think so. Yeah, I think the last one was 58 minutes. I think yeah, when this is cut down, right. this will probably be more like maybe one hour, five minutes after I've cut out our breathing and pauses. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah, that, a nightmare to edit, I'm sure. Ah, no, nah, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you everyone for, for watching this. And obviously, and as usual, the Project Vice uh, link is the pinned comment in this video. So definitely go and subscribe to him yeah this is this is something that we're you know we weren't sure of the first episode people would enjoy this uh very clear you guys do like it thank you everyone for watching and listening to today's episode please make sure to go down into the description and the pinned comment click all the links do the subscribing the following the what all that. <laughs> do all of the above but below <laughs> and yeah. thank you for watching today's video and we will see you all in episode three thank you for watching